by vibrating the outer vocal cords, and each cat seems to have its own purring frequency. One of the things we found from our observations of cats on farms and, and out and about in general is that they tend to be pretty quiet. Unless there's a fight or something going on, you don't hear them say very much. And one of the things they don't tend to do is to meow. The reason we think this happens is that basically the cat learns to meow. It learns that human beings respond very well to vocalizations. We're a conversational species, if you like. And so a cat finds that the best way of getting its owner's attention is to make a noise, and then it can indicate by some sort of body language about what it wants to do, whether it wants to be fed or whether it wants to be let out of the door or whatever. With some owners, obviously, this can develop into quite a conversation with the owner speaking and then the cat speaking alternately. Whether the cat really understands what the owner's saying or whether it's simply trying to get the owner's attention and say, hurry up and feed me, uh, we're not sure. But certainly, um, cats become much more vocal when they're around people. Very, very Songwriter Lindsay DePaul speaks fluent cat. I have two cats. I have a seal point Siamese and this little one called Cleo. She's another Siamese, although you wouldn't believe it. And she looks like a cross between an alien and a tripod because she's only got three legs. And uh, she's a wonderful little cat. She's a rescue cat. And I found that one has a different language with every cat one has. Cleo, Leo, Leo. Cleo, Leo, Leo. Cleo. Yes? I to used to speak fluent Burmese, but I'm learning Siamese pretty well now. generally tell you everything they want. They're not polite. They will say, I want to go out. I want some food. Leave me alone. Give me a stroke. And you learn the noises they make and you imitate them back. It must mean something to them. Maybe I'm offending them sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> You're a good girl, aren't you? <laughs> cats have all the same senses humans have, but they work in different ways. A cat's senses evolved first and foremost to help with hunting. Even an easy living house cat like Mango here still has all those sharp hunting perceptions. The front set eyes, for instance. When Mango looks at something, each eye gets a slightly off-center picture of it. The brain centers these and produces a three-dimensional image. Mango then knows how big the object is and how far away. Compared to the size of his head, Mango has much bigger eyes than our own. They gather more light. He can see as well in semi-darkness as in the middle of the day. Mango's eyes are so sensitive that they need pupils which can shut out bright light in a way that our own round pupils cannot. His pupils can close almost entirely into a slit. And then when the light fades, they open up to fill a much larger proportion of the eye than human pupils do. Mango can't see in the darkest dark, but he can see in much dimmer light than humans can. Cats have a layer of mirror cells at the rear of the eye. Light that has passed undetected through the light-sensitive retina is reflected back, giving the receptors a second chance to detect it. This increases the efficiency of Mango's eyes by 40%. And just to make things even more efficient, cats have invested more in light-sensitive cells that operate best in low-light conditions. Altogether, Mango can see in light levels six times lower than his human companion can. But a cat isn't better than a human at everything. Even if he could be taught to, Mango could never read. His eyes are not good at resolving fine detail, and he sees a printed page as a gray sheet. A cat sees the whole world a bit like someone who's lost his glasses. 
and a cat's not very good with color either. Cats have sacrificed detail and color to gain good vision at night. The cat's world of color is washed out. They can make out some yellow, some green, and some blue. But some colors appear as gray or black, like red. Another important hunting tool is hearing. Mango can turn his ears as well as his head. This helps him pinpoint a sound. The funnel-shaped ears really channel the sounds they pick up, amplifying them like a megaphone. Cats can hear sounds that just pass humans by, high-pitched ones such as the squeak of a mouse. And when a cat hears that squeak, it needs to know exactly where it's coming from. The relative intensity of the sound in each ear automatically turns the cat's head in the right direction. A cat is also very good at spotting movement, but when it gets closer to its prey, the next sense it needs is touch. This kind of game gives Mango a chance to go through his whole hunting routine. He even uses his whiskers to feel the feather. A whisker, three times thicker than a normal cat hair and three times deeper in the skin, has sensitive cells at its base. These give the brain minute information about anything the whisker touches. The front paws are super sensitive too and are used to explore new things and to test out food. The pads can feel the speed of something passing over them. The information from the pads is relayed to the brain as instantly as electricity. A cat can learn a lot about something just by gently patting or stroking it. A cat's senses have been honed for hunting, but they're useful for mating, too. A female, when she's ready to conceive, announces this by releasing scents that are picked up by the Jacobson's organ in the male's nose. In a free-living group, several males will converge and all try to mate with a female. The kittens in the resulting litter may have more than one father, so by mating freely, the female makes sure that at least some kittens get the best genes available. It's also a strategy for keeping the peace. Since no male cat will ever know which of the eventual kittens are his, he'll be less likely to hurt or kill any of them. When the kittens arrive, they're totally vulnerable. Though they're covered in fur, they can't regulate their own temperature. They're also blind, deaf, and unable to walk. But all that's a good thing. It means that under no circumstances can they stray from their mother where anything could happen to them. Kittens follow the smell and the warmth to their mother's teats, latch on, and continue to suckle up to eight hours a day. And when they're not suckling, there's only one other possible thing to do. Sleep. The journey from birth to adulthood is, by human standards, pretty swift. To kittens, though, it must seem slow. This one is ten days old. It can see a little, but its eyes are still cloudy and won't clear properly for another three weeks. At this age, the kitten cannot move about easily. It uses a 